Welcome to EasyLM Learning Simplified. My name is Ruth and today we are going to be discussing on the topic uh, rates of reaction and reversible reactions. We'll be looking at the factors affecting equilibrium and the factor we'll be focusing on today is temperature. And then we'll do a few questions. So factors affecting the position of equilibrium, such factors act as a strain on the state of equilibrium and the system reacts in a way to oppose that chain. So these factors are temperature, pressure, concentration, and catalyst. So today we are going to focus on temperature, how temperature affects the rate of equilibrium. So we have two reactions, exothermic and endothermic reactions. So we mentioned these reactions before in thermochemistry or energy changes, you can go back and check them out. Although we are going to be repeating some of the reasons why they behave so. So as an endothermic, uh, endothermic reactions, uh, if you increase temperatures, they favor this endothermic reaction. For example, if uh, we have the denitrogen tetraoxide, which um, can decompose to form nitrogen four oxide, which is a gas, this reaction can go forward and backwards. When I talk about endothermic reaction, I'm talking about the reaction that absorbs. Energy. They absorb energy from the surrounding or from the environment and in the process that energy is used up in the reaction. So when you talk about endothermic reactions, you will notice their energy is usually at positive. Their energy changes is at positive or enthalpy. So if you increase temperature, it means that you are able to favor them because they need to absorb more. You give them accessibility to that energy. That is the reason why increasing temperature in an endothermic reaction favors them. So if you look at this the nitrogen uh, tetraoxide, if you increase the temperature, you can see the forward reaction is positive and that's where we get the endothermic process. So the more temperature you increase, the forward reaction is favored. If you decrease the temperature, the opposite reaction is favored. So the forward reaction is always endo, the opposite is true, the back reaction is exothermic. So increase in temperature shifts the equilibrium to the right since the reaction is endothermic and more nitrogen oxide will be formed. So you get to see more of the brown fumes if you increase the temperature. If you decrease the temperature, the, the equilibrium will shift to the left. So you notice like more of the nitrogen tetraoxide is going to be formed, which is pale yellow in color because the opposite reaction is exothermic which is favored by low temperatures. Exothermic reactions, they are favored by a decrease in temperature. So if you look at this reaction, the reaction of sulfur oxide with oxygen to form sulfur 6, it gives off a lot of heat. So you can imagine if this reaction is giving off a lot of heat, and remember you said the forward reaction is the one that is exothermic, the back reaction in in that case will be endothermic. So the oxothermic reaction, it's giving a lot of heat. So if you keep on pumping more heat to this system, it has to get rid of that excess heat. So it favors the opposite reaction. So the forward reaction is only favored if we remove that heat because the more we remove the heat from the system, it's able to release more heat. So the forward reaction is favored. But the opposite reaction or the back reaction is favored when we increase the temperature. So you notice in increase in temperature, the production of sulfur oxide and oxygen is favored. When you decrease the temperature, the production of sulfur six oxide is favored. So decrease in temperature causes more yield of sulfur six oxide because the equilibrium shifts to right. While well, since the reaction is exothermic favored by low temperatures. And then if you increase the temperature, it causes a sulfur 6 to decompose, decreasing its yield. Mm. Increasing its temperature shifts the equilibrium to the left because the reaction is oxothermic, okay. which favors low temperatures. So we are going to look at different questions with different values on the end that the end that piece are different. And then we are going to come up with a conclusion on what happens if we increase or decrease temperature. So in this case, this is um, 
the reaction of ammonium ion with hydroxide ion to form ammonia gas and water. So the forward reaction, as you can see, is endothermic. So the value that is always given is for the forward reaction. That means the backward reaction is exothermic. We said if you increase the temperature, the forward reaction is favored. So that means more of uh, ammonia and water will be formed. Since this is an endothermic reaction and decrease in temperature uh, favors the back reaction or shifts the, the equilibrium to the left. So more of the ammonium ion and hydroxide ions is formed. So this is because this is a exothermic reaction. Then we look at another example. So if you look at this reaction, the forward reaction is producing this heat. So negative values tells you that it's exothermic. So this is forward reaction is exothermic, which makes the back reaction to be endothermic. So increase in temperature. Favors. The back reaction or shifts the equilibrium to the left. More of hydrogen gas and chlorine gas is formed. This reaction is endothermic. Then decrease in temperature uh, favors the forward reaction. Or it shifts the equilibrium to the right so more of hydrogen chloride gas is given off since this reaction is exothermic So you've seen the two differences. So remember the forward reaction is the one that is always, the, the energy change is the one that is always indicated at the end. So the opposite reaction would always be opposite of that. So that's it for the uh, factor of temperature. So we are going to look at other factors. So make sure you're able to understand how to explain. We can talk about the shifting of the equilibrium or the forward or back reaction, moving or shifting. And then also you can be taught to identify the observations that will be seen. So make sure you're able to remember the colors of some of these products and compounds.
So that brings us to the end. So see you in the next lesson as we look at the next factor.